enjoying the weather. Uh, on today's program, we are going to be looking at the topic, making life adjustments. Make, there is no disputing the fact that we, at least in the recent past, maybe in the past three, four months, we've all had to make some real life adjustments. Things have not been the way they used to, they used to be. The work pattern has changed. Our lifestyle have changed. Our relationships have, things have changed completely. We've had the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, that has really traveled around the world and is still ravaging many parts of the world, even as we speak. Then we've had the effect of that, not just on our jobs, on our businesses, on our careers, but also on our, on our, on our relationships with, our, with one another. People can't shake hands these days. You can't hug anybody. You can't even go visit your, your elderly parents or grandparents. They can't come visiting you. And so many things have changed. And what that has meant is, whether we like it or not, each and every one of us, we've had to make some life adjustments. We've had to rearrange and reprogram and refocus and rechannel our efforts and energy and everything in different ways compared to the way it was before the pandemic started. So in order to stay on track and maintain our pace, we have to make adjustments. We have to revisit, reevaluate, and readdress every aspect of our lives. For instance, if you're on the highway and there are three lanes, and maybe you're in the middle lane, and suddenly you realize the middle lane is not moving or is very slow. Meanwhile, the outer lane is moving freely and fast. What do you do? You make adjustments. You, 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 you indicate and then you pull over and you join the fast lane. Those are the types of, that is a pictorial of the adjustments that we all have had to make and still making even today. Because now many shops are open, many businesses are trying to get back, but the reality is many will never open again. Many will open and they will not last till the end of the year. And so many things have changed. All of this, what it means is you and I, we need to start thinking. We need to start programming ourselves. We need to start training ourselves to make adjustments. And some of these adjustments, they are life adjustments. There are things, there are adjustments that will affect the rest of our being. Is it a small one? Is this a simple one? Is it a regular adjustment? But whichever one it is, the key is that you don't stand still. The focus, the agenda, the purpose is that you maintain a consistent growth and progress. So adjustment on its own is not a bad thing. Adjustment on its own is not a negative thing. The focus is don't get stuck. Don't get left behind. Don't get, don't find yourself locked, stuck into one spot. No, make the necessary adjustment so that you can experience consistent growth and progress. The funny thing about life adjustments or adjustments in general is the fact that adjustment requires change. Adjustment demands change. You cannot adjust. You cannot actually say you have made an adjustment or you are adjusting if you are not changing. So change on its own is, is, is an element of adjustment. But the challenge is, we all, with no exception, 
every one of us will resist change. Nobody is happily embracing and jumping over themselves about change. No, there is an, there is an element of, 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 of restriction. There's an element of you not wanting to yield. Why? Because we are creatures of habit. We like the way things are. We like them to remain that way. But life does not play that game that way. Because the only thing in life that is constant, the only thing in life that you and I will embrace and will have for eternity is change. And so, if, if change is a permanent residence with us, then we need to open ourselves up to embrace adjustments. But small adjustments... When we make small, small, little adjustments, we reduce the natural human resistance to change. If you ask somebody to say, well, unless it's a, it's a, it's a life and death situation, if you say to somebody, you cannot eat uh, 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 your toast every morning anymore, and you have to stop immediately, they will kick and force. They will scream and shout. But if you say, look, instead of having two slices of toast, why don't you have one slice? And then why don't you have half a slice? Because the adjustments are incremental or, or the, the adjustments are made in, small, in small, small sizes, in a reduced quantity, people are more open to embrace such adjustments. And that includes you and, you and I. It includes you and I. Unfortunately, what many people don't realize, or people realize they decide to ignore, is the fact that the longer you delay in making these little adjustments, the further off course or off pace you get. And the more you delay, the bigger the adjustment that you will eventually have to make will become down. Down, somewhere down the line. So instead of uh, uh, addressing and accepting little changes and small adjustments and, and, and little tweak here and there, if you choose, if you make a decision to say, no, I'm not having it, I'm not going to do that, I refuse to, to make that adjustment, fine. A time will come when the adjustment will have to be forced on you. And when that happens, you will have to make very big, big life-changing adjustments. And usually, they are at that time out of your human control. So one of the best ways, one of the best ways to make this, to avoid a, a situation where you have an overwhelming uh, 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 change in front of you, is to make these small adjustments, make these small changes when you can, when you should, when you need to, because small changes will keep you from developing rot, from being stuck in one place. If, for instance, your goal, is, say at work, or in a gathering, in a, in a community, if your goal, if your target is to become the head of the group or the team or the supervisor, then you need to make small adjustments as you go along. You need to help yourself and grow yourself into that new position that you are aiming for. You know, one of the, one of the sad stories, sad story of life is, you, you and I, we've seen, we've heard, we've read, we've, we've witnessed parents who's worked hard, who's become very rich and very wealthy, and they've, they've amassed a lot of wealth. And then they pass away, and that wealth is transferred to their children. Because the children were never trained to gradually embrace this new situation that they find themselves such children within a short period of time they are back in poverty because 
they never grew into that new position. They never, they were never prepared, or they didn't prepare themselves. They didn't, they did not make the necessary adjustments in life that will bring them, that will put them in a place of readiness when the opportunity comes. That's why people say when opportunity meets preparation, success is guaranteed. What adjustments do you need to make in your life? What are some of the little adjustments that I need to make in my life? What are those little tweaks that you and I need to make in your work, in your business, with your children, with your spouse, with your parents, with, 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 with your goals and your, your vision for life. What are those little adjustments? Or what is that adjustment that you need to make? And how are you preparing? How are you working towards making those little, little, little adjustments? Because ultimately, those little things, those little tricks here and there, are what will bring you to a place, a, a, a place where everybody will look at you and say, Oh, he's definitely better than the way he was yesterday. She's definitely better than the way she was two years ago. Why? Because you've made those little adjustments. Sometimes we get distracted. Sometimes we all get preoccupied with other things. Sometimes we allow our, our focus and our attention to drift. And so some of the things that could have been a small problem, small adjustments, small change here and there, suddenly you wake up, they are now not just big, they are gigantic. And more importantly, they've now become an emergency. So it's not just the fact that they are big in size. There is now an urgency attached to them. And that's where you, have, you are going to have to make the big adjustment in your life which in all truth will be more costly, will be more painful, will, you will not be ready for the new position. But sometimes life happens. Sometimes it just comes at you from your blind spot, you didn't see it coming, and it happens. And again, you have to respond, you have to adjust, you have to, you have to, to put yourself in a, in a new dispensation, in a new position, in a new environment, you have to now relate to different people and, and entertain different visitors. But all things being equal, if you and I will just maintain focus, if you and I will just keep our eyes on the go, if you and I will just be open to make those little adjustments as we go along, progress and success, are guaranteed. They are guaranteed. For instance, you are a student. You are not attending your lectures. You are not spending time in the library. You are not studying up. You are not doing the coursework. You are not doing anything. And then one day you, 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 you jump out of bed to say, exams is tomorrow. Well, yes, exam is tomorrow, but they didn't just put that date in the calendar yesterday. That exam date has been there since you, you signed the dotted lines to say you want to enroll for the program. But because you have refused to make the little adjustments to your, your social outing, you have to be at the party, you have to go and attend the show, you have to... And now... It is no longer just a big adjustment, but it, it has become an emergency. And sometimes, things might just play to you, and you might make it past the, 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 the first obstacle. But even if you manage to cross the, fin final, the finishing line, nature, has a way of demanding from you what you have not paid at the front end. As they say, pay now or pay later, whichever one you're going to pay. The problem is 
if you have to pay later, it is usually plus the accrued interest. But whichever way, you have to pay. But if you make those little payments, if you make those little adjustments, if you just change that attitude, if you just refocus your attention, if you just pay more, uh, uh, um, be more lenient, if you just be more courteous, if you just just be more aware, if you just live more in your in your here and now, when the big opportunity comes, you don't need to struggle because you've prepared. This is what you've prepared all your life towards becoming and the best way to do that the best way for you to make sure that when that opportunity comes you are ready you are you are completely there is from now you have to find a way to get a bit more organized you have to find a way to push yourself slightly harder to go beyond the 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 the, the, the mark you have to find a way to just Press past the pain point. You have to, to bring a, a, a certain degree of focus to your work, to your goal, to your to your approach, to your system, to your the way you manage things. And it's this little here and little there, a little sprinkle of this of salt, a little addition of, of, of pepper, a little dot of, of, of spice and some element of of this and water here and reduce the heat there that's how you cook that delicious meal but if all you do is just bring everything and chuck it in the pot and fire it will still cook but it will, ju it will just not taste the same life is subject to change and change is not stranger to any of us. Therefore, this idea of it just happened. Sometimes it just happened. But 90% of the time, it didn't just happen. It's just that you have refused, you failed, you have been, been negligent in making the little adjustments, the little adjustments that you and I need to make. For instance, a lot of people, almost everybody is working from home now. But did you know that a year ago, if somebody had said to all employers worldwide that the best way to work now is for you to allow your staff, your employees to work from home remotely, they don't need to come to the office. Just let them work from the comfort of their homes. A lot of employers will have will have called the police. A lot of employees will have said, it's not possible. I can't work if I'm not in the office. But look where we are today. Look where we are right now. But you know the funny part? There were people, there were employers and employees who were already practicing this remote system of working who had made the necessary adjustment and when the time came it didn't bother them they didn't feel the the, the stress and the pain and all the what all the people went through they just it was just smooth sailing for them in what of what part of your life if you really if your goal and my goal is to become better than we are right now, in what aspect, in what part of your life and my life do we need to start making those little adjustments? Maybe adjustment in the time you go to bed. Adjustment in the time you, you wake up in the morning. Adjustment in the way you, you drive. Adjustment in the way you eat. Adjustment in the way you view things. Adjustment in the way you relate to people. Adjustment in the way you talk, in the way you, you think, in, in your views, in your mindset. For instance, we, we, the, the, the whole of this month has been overtaken. In fact, knocked COVID out of the, out of the calendar completely by this Black, Black Lives Matter movement, and rightly so. 
But if the if 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 the 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 police authority and the government of every nation had paid attention to the cries and the and the noise and the and the plead and and the and everything that the black and the minority communities have been saying for years, we will probably not be in a position, for instance, where that police officer killed George Floyd, or where the whole world now is up in rage because of that. When you fail to make those little adjustments, they have a way of catching up with you down the line. So what do you need to do? What do I need to do to make these life adjustments? To make these adjustments in my life in every day? Many times, so many times, these adjustments are made deliberately. They are made consciously. And when that is the case, they just go seamlessly. They just go like, it never happened because they were planned, they were, they were worked on, and they were executed according to plan. And what that does is it gives you, it, it, it gives you confidence. It, it builds your self-esteem. It helps you to know, to have that, that inner strength that I can do this. I've got what it takes to adjust, to make the necessary change. And when that happens, sometimes you don't even know that you're making the adjustment. You don't even recognize that the adjustment is being made. But then there are times when, like I said, it just it, you just you just see it at the last second just come through your blind spot. Or it just slaps you bang in your face, right between the eyes. And so in, that, in, in a situation like that, you are forced to make the necessary adjustment. The challenge with adjustment is that it, it works both in the external and, and the internal. You have to adjust in the external. And you have to also adjust on the internal. The external is your, your approach, the way you, you, you relate and the way you handle, the way you manage. But the internal one is the way you prepare your mindset, your thinking, your emotions, your, 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 your psychology of how to deal with this new dispensation. Because change is, is, is inevitable. Because change is imminent. Because change must happen. Adjustment has to be made. Adjustment needs to be made. Now, sometimes you are not even sure how it's going to pan out. But the, the, the challenge is whether you... It's not about you knowing the outcome. The focus is you doing what you have to do, what you can do, what you need to do, what we all have to change, like like now, to to to, to adjust and, and 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 embrace the new dispensation. For instance, you get to your office tomorrow or on Monday. You say, "Oh, where's where's Peter?" And they say, "Oh, Peter is no longer with us. We now have a." Uh, Helen, she's the new head of the department. Now, what are you going to do? Peter is your buddy. Peter knows the way you work. You know how he works. Before he says anything, you know what he's thinking. And you've worked with Peter for the past five, seven years. So the two of you, you've worked together hand in hand and everything. But now you have Helen. Now, Helen has never been part of this organization before. He's, she's coming from a totally different organization, but more than that, from a different sector into this new organization. So you have no pre-knowledge of Helen's preference, her method of working, how she, the type of pressure she puts on, on, on people that she works. You have no clue. 
you are uncertain what will happen next. All kinds of thought at that time will be racing through your head. Should I like Helen or just, just push her to one corner because the only person I know to work with is Peter? You start thinking, what will my day-to-day -day operations be like? Has my, will my role, my usual role, would that have to change now? Would the expectations that Peter has been, uh, is expected of, is that going to change now, now that Peter is gone and Helen is here? What if Helen decides that she doesn't like the way we've been working now, she has to change the whole apparatus and parameters and systems and structure of the organization? What are you going to do about that? When that happens, that is where the, the biggest task for you and I, the bigger task, task rather, is not about the external adjustments. The biggest task, the greater challenge, the, 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 where the real work is at that instance, is on the inside. Because your external expression is a, a, a correspondent uh, 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 effect of what's going on on the inside of you. Okay, maybe the issue, the change, the sudden change with you is not to do with your work. Let's say it's to do with your health. Yesterday, everything was fine. You've gone to work, you've got back, had meal, did everything, you went to bed. Now you wake up and you can't get out of bed. You can't move your legs, you can't move your hands. It's like the whole house is resting on you. Suddenly, the ambulance is racing you to the hospital. Suddenly, the doctor is saying, Prepare her or prepare him for surgery immediately. Suddenly, that change has just dropped on your laps. You also have to relate to it both from the external adjustments and from the internal adjustments. At that instant, what will be going through your mind? That's not the time when you think, oh, I didn't finish that uh, dissertation. Oh, that project, they'll be waiting for me in the meeting. None of that will cross your mind. You'll be thinking, am I going to die? What are my options? How will this end? How will this affect the quality of my life, even if the operation is successful? How long will it take me to recover? Will I ever be able to be the same again? And on and on and on, you'll be thinking. But you see, when, when, when we talk about adjustment, yes, you may need to do things differently. Yes, you have to do things differently. But there are ways for you to prepare yourself to... to, to to relate to the adjustment that you are going through, that is happening to you, and when you embrace this, when you when you approach it from these two or three uh, uh, principles that we're going to talk about now, you will find out that even that which seemed like end of the road, even that which seemed like there is no coming back from this you'll be amazed how quickly your life, the changes, the adjustments, you'll be amazed how quickly things fall in line for you. You must recognize that there are three levels to this. The first level is what, it, what is called the neutral zone. The neutral zone is the heart of the transition process because remember, you're transitioning from one from one reality to another. The neutral zone of the transition, that is where you make the purposeful choice to move from situation A to situation B. 
That is not you thinking, is it going to or is it not? No, now you know it's going to. Now you are convinced that you are going into that surgery. Now you, there is no doubt in your mind that Helen is your newborn. And so you have to purposefully choose. Make a choice. Make a deliberate, conscious choice to move from where you were and move to where you need to be. This is the time when you start exploring. When you start asking questions. When you start navigating what are the options available to me. Does anybody here know anything about Helen? Can somebody enlighten me on how to handle this, my new boss? What are the symptoms of this type of sickness? And the people that have been through it, how did they come out of it? It is in the neutral zone that you, 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 you start to try things out. You try to, you start to, to experiment with things. Because at that time, you have not even settled permanently into any role or situation. That is the time when you try, okay, maybe Helen is not the time that you have to call every time to say, can I bring the report? She's the type now that you have to put everything together and at the close of business in the evening, then you go and put your file on her table. That's the time for you to start trying different things, thinking different ways and approaching different things. So that's the neutral zone. Then you move to the new beginnings. At the new beginning stage, this is the time when you think the reality has come home. This is the time when, when you start to accept the changes that are on your lap. This is the time when you embrace your next step. This is the time when you know because of this new surgical operation that you've just had, you can't just pick up those heavy loads now and, and put them on your shoulders. Because of this new operation now, you can't eat like you've been eating every day. You have to adjust your, your diet. This is time when you start to, to feel yourself moving forward with recharge clarity and purpose. And that clarity of purpose will only come when you have accepted that this is your new reality. A lot of people never get to this point. A lot of people never make the adjustment enough to get to this point because they refuse to accept the new reality. They live in denials. They live in, 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 an, in a zone where they are kicking and fighting and screaming and shouting at a, a, a bus that has already left the station two hours ago. This is the time when you recognize with this new, new arrangement, with this new uh, system, with this new head of department, there, are, there will be new opportunities. There will be new opportunities ahead of you. Take the blinder off. Peter is gone. Helen is the new boss. Learn Helen's way and embrace the opportunities that that brings. This is the time for you to start relearn how to manage and control the new layout of your environment. This is where you become, you have to, you, you are informed and you're able to make conscious choices that are not just in your own best interest, but in the interest of the whole community or the whole workplace. So that's the new beginning. Then the end. This is the phase of transition. 
when he begins to identify with you under the new dispensation. So now you've done your part. The new dispensation is no longer just your reality. It has become your world. It has become your person. Your life, your, your body, your everything, your thinking is now the new dispensation. It's now the new reality. It's now the fullness of all the little adjustments that you've been making all along. And every now and again, you will feel a sense of resistance just build up on you because your body wants to go back to the old way. And now you will be the teacher. You will be teaching yourself. You will be training yourself. You will be correcting yourself. You will even be, be scolding yourself for thinking the old way of thinking. When you have passed through these three stages, the neutral zone, the beginning, and the end, now you position yourself in a place where you can start to enjoy your new reality. You know, there are some people today that would rather not go back to the office forever. They are so happy now working from home. They are so settled now with the way things work from home. The children knows when it's working. The, the spouse knows when she's busy. Everybody knows when the meeting is on. And the whole system has evolved now into a new reality. And so they don't want to go back. They don't want to change that. But the, the good news is change is coming because it's inevitable. So how do you begin to enjoy this your new reality? One of the things you must tell yourself is you must not become predictable. People around you, your associates, your colleagues, your family, your friends, they have known you in a certain way. And they expect you to still be that way. Even though in you, yourself, you know you've changed. Now is the time for you not to become predictable. Now is the time for you to shock them and surprise them. Because it is in so doing that you bring them in line with your new reality. Doing the same thing, the same way, the same time, the same place, with the same people all the time. It's boring. It is boring. So one of the best you can do for yourself is be unpredictable. Break out of your comfort zone. At least once a week. Do something different. Do something out of just like, whoa, what was that? Do something you've never done before. Don't go to work in your car. Get on the bus. Catch the train. Don't go for lunch at that same fish and chips place. Go and get sandwiches somewhere. Try that. Instead of eating the same Chinese every other day from the same Chinese restaurant, try the new Balti or African food down the road. Instead of just staying at home and playing your, uh, what's it called? Computer games of shooting and... No. Get out. Go to the park. Go and learn how to snowboard or whatever it is they do. You don't have to buy all the time from Sainsbury. Change your grocery uh, store. Have you tried Aldi lately? Have you been to Waitrose? Have you tried Morrison's? Because there are more reasons to shop at Morrison's. Change. Don't be predictable. In so doing, you open yourself up to opportunities, to options, to new experience, to new realities, and your body is pre being prepared as you do that to other adjustments. Have you noticed that <laughs> if you, for instance, if Sainsbury is the only shop or store where you buy your groceries. 
for whatever reason, you now try ASDA. The first thing you will notice is everything is different. The layout is different. The are where you get your 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 fresh juice it, it, in in Sri, where you go to that angle now in Asda, they sell a cat food there. But you see, there is nothing wrong with that. Because all along when you go to Sainsbury, you go from <laughs> you go from the entrance straight to where you buy your ice cream and go to the deli store and then go and buy your bottle of uh, Fanta and then you walk to the checkout, pay and then out you go. And you've done that. That same route, that same routine for the past three years. Now you're in Aldi. And suddenly you realize, oh wait, I didn't realize. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you're in Aldi. And suddenly you found out, oh, how's that? I didn't know they sell flowers here. Oh, I didn't know they sell bread here. Oh, I didn't know they sell cat food and dog food and every other rat food here. That new experience. That new exposure will force you now, when next you go to Sainsbury, instead of doing your normal three, three, three stop route, you now go from aisle to aisle, trying to see whether they do the same thing. And all of that are helping you, not just to adjust, but to grow as a person. To develop and increase yourself. And all of that is putting you in a frame of mind where you embrace process. Because every adjustment that you and I will make and are making, there's a process behind it. There's a process behind it. You're not just moving along and... No, no. There is a process to this life adjustments that we're talking about. Now that you are aware of the adjustments, let me give you a few tips as we prepare to finish up on how to help you through that process. In order for you to enjoy the process, you see, a lot of people, when you're traveling, instead of traveling, you leave and you arrive. Everything in between, you don't. You, it has nothing to do with you. You know you are in London and you are going to Manchester. All you have in your head is London, Manchester. London, Manchester. Anything in between, you don't reckon with it. But you see, the beauty of the journey is not your departure point and your destination. The, the beauty of the journey is the process, is the transition, is the trip itself. It's all the little villages and the cows and the tree and the cars and the houses and the bridges and the this and that that you, you go past along the way. Let the process help you because again, it will open you up to new things new views, new opinions, new ideas. There's no way your eyes will see something that your brain won't think about it. But if all you do is close your eyes, as it were, to everything around you, then you will miss the whole essence of adjustment. So what can you do to help you through and enjoy the process? Number one, Invite your support system in. Every, no, no man is an island. We all have people around us and in our lives whose purpose, whether express, whether it is expressed openly or it is by default, their purpose is to support you. Whenever you are going through your adjustment, you can't do it alone. You need these people around you. 
Allow them to help you. Allow them to support you. Some of them will help you by listening to what you have to say. Some of them will help you by giving you a shoulder to lean on. Some of them will help you by, by, by opening a new aspect of the whole process to you that you didn't even know was there. But unless you open up and allow them, you won't enjoy the process. And a lot of us think this person don't like you. This person is not helpful. That person is not even lifting a finger. Excuse me. The truth is, it's not that they are horrible people. It's not that they don't want to help. Some of them, you have to, you've closed yourself up. There's no way in for them. Some of them don't even know how to help you. So they're expecting you, they're relying on you to guide them into how to help you. So, invite your support system in and allow them to help you. As you're going through the process, the, no, the next thing for you to enjoy, the next thing you need to do is to let your emotion your emotions let it just flow let be be human nobody expects you to be a robot to be uh, i'm not touched by anything no be human let your emotions flow for instance we're talking earlier on about now you have helen as your boss if you need to cry go into the toilet and just cry your eyes out now you are in the hospital. Suddenly you need to go for this emergency surgery. If, if, if crying is what will help you prepare for that surgery, just cry. Every aspect of your emotion that comes to play, allow it to go. A lot of people are more ill, not because of the illness or the, 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 the disease. They are more ill because they refuse to allow their emotions to be part of the process. Oh, men don't cry. Who said that? Real men cry. Oh, yes, they cry. I'm telling you, they cry. I cried. Two days ago, I was still crying. Not because I was sad, but because I was emotional. I saw something. And it touched me deep on the inside. I, I, I had to let myself just feel that touch. And before I knew it, tears were in my eyes. I was, I cried. Well, you know, you're a sissy. Whatever, that's your opinion. But guess what? After I finished crying, oh, I felt so good. Oh, I really, en I enjoyed myself. It was so sweet. You want to enjoy the process? Seek solutions. Every new adjustment or every new dispensation, every new reality as a result of adjustments brings a new opportunity. Ushers in a new adventure. Opens you up to a new reality. Embrace it. Take the opportunity to seek solution, to, 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 um, to find out what is the new thing in this thing. Ask questions. Talk to your mentors. Talk to your... Everybody talk. Think outside the box. It's not just one way to, 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 to your destination. There are many other routes... But if you don't go seeking, if you don't go looking, if you don't open yourself up, life will still happen. But you'll be like the people that said, what happened? Rather than for you to say, I made it happen. Seeking solution, it gives you focus. It gives you purpose. It gives you a sense of taking ownership of not just the adjustment, but your part in the process.
one of the things with adjustment, life adjustment is that if care is not taken, you will end up on the other side and you don't even know who you are. Have you met people like that? They change so much that you don't even know them. They don't even know who they are. No. Just because external circumstances are changing around you does not mean that the real you, your, your core values have to change. Just because Helen is now the boss doesn't mean now you have to lie when you don't, you, 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 you never lied at work, well, you never lied before. Now that Helen is now the, the, the new boss doesn't mean suddenly now you have to ex do things that is not who you are on the inside of you. You may not have control over the situation at hand. But by all means, you have a lot of control over how you respond to the new situation. Don't get lost in the process. Stay true to who you are. Stay true to your core self. Because ultimately, that is what will count. And as you go through the motion, as you go through the process, as you adjust and, 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 and rearrange yourself, remember, change is the only thing permanent. So expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Because change is just, it's just around the corner. Oh, it's just waiting for you. Being open to expecting the unexpected, it will lessen the stress that the sudden change will put on you. Oh, this never happened to me before. Well, guess what? It's always the first time. And here you are with your first experience. It will lessen your stress and increase your ability to handle it, to manage it, to go with the flow. Any time and every time you are presented with a big or unexpected change, even though it can be confusing, even though it can be stressful, even though it can be overwhelming, but there's always the possibility to navigate through it and come out with strength and grace if you put yourself in a position where you know change is coming. And the only thing you and I can do, the only thing you and I will do, the only thing you and I have to do and manage change is to prepare for life adjustment. Prepare yourself for life adjustment. Prepare yourself for life adjustment because they are inevitable. There was, some, there was a time when you sign up for a job when you are 20 and you stay in that job till when you retire when was the last time you had such a job there was a time when you both go to the altar you say i do and you stay together till the day death come many people are not having that experience there was a time when you live in same place, one place forever. It doesn't work that way. There was a time when you go to school and you study accountancy and you remain an accountant for the rest of your life. It, that, that is far gone now. But unless you open yourself up to the changes of life, by being prepared to make every life adjustment that are required and necessary, you will cry yourself to sleep every night. You will wake up dejected. You will not be able to do anything because you refuse to change. You refuse to embrace. You refuse to embrace the new reality because you refuse to make every necessary life adjustment. As I close, this one is just a way of notice or, or announcement. Yesterday, I was invited 
to take part in the ongoing 25 days of 25 push-ups every day to raise awareness about the uh, uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and the effect of it in people's lives. So I started the push-ups yesterday. I've done the one for yesterday. I've done the one for today. And so every day I have to nominate somebody. So I've nominated two people. So it might just be your turn. You never know. I've got your name and I know where you live. I might just call your name. But since that, since that yesterday, I've been thinking, what else can be done to raise the awareness about not just PTSD, but mental health as, as a subject, as a topic? And so one of the things I am planning to do is that for the month of July, every of the programs for the month of July, we're going to be talking about something to do with mental health. We're going to have guests on the programs. You, you know me, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not even in any medical related field. But we have friends that we can call upon. And so far, we've had, we have, we've had good responses from some of them. We've agreed, they've agreed to come on the programs and spend the time with us, enlightening us and helping us and, and raising awareness about mental health issues. Also, I have uh, added a donation button to my Facebook to for people to donate towards the Mental Health Awareness Charity. If you are able, please, every little helps according to Tesco. But towards the, between now and the month of July, and throughout the month of July, if you have any questions, or any query or concern, if there's anything you want to know or you want any of our panel of experts to talk about regarding mental health issues, please send me an email, send me a, a, a direct mail or, or message mail, whichever way. If you have my phone number, text me, call me, send me a WhatsApp. Let us take advantage of these few weeks that we have experts on the platform who are going to just take us through everything from depression, anxiety, to PTSD, to everything. So please, mark your calendar, tell somebody about it, invite a friend. Every week throughout the month of July, we're going to be focusing on mental health issues. And we will have experts on the platform to help us through. Thank you. Thank you so much for being part of tonight's program. Life is sweet. Life is very sweet. But part of what life brings is the demand for change. And the way we respond it by, it's by making these little life adjustments. Thank you. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.